worst fandom you've never heard of. Fallen fandoms, number one. Now, somebody sent this in the Discord, and the thumbnail I saw, this is the thumbnail. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this. It's this show right here, The Loud House. Bro, I, I think I was out of the age age range to watch this. Like, this is probably around the time I stopped watching cartoons. I don't know when this released, but I've heard, like, this fandom is really, f like, crazy weird. We're talking about My Hero Academia levels of fandom. Like, super weird. And I always heard it, but I was always confused because I never watched it. I never watched it. It was good until 2019. Yeah, I wouldn't know, but <laughs> it's worse than My Hero Academia. No, that's a lie. That's a lie. Y'all pushing it with that one. Y'all are pushing it with that one, okay? Y'all are pushing it with that one. Nah, 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 nah. I refuse to believe it. I refuse to believe it until I see it. I refuse to believe it. I guess we're gonna see. Let's see what's up with this, this video. What if I told you, somewhere among the annals of recent internet history, there lies a fandom so hilariously awful that it might be the worst out there? That's right, worst is- Okay, worst is pushing it though. We gotta rank this. Okay, because when I did my- Whenever I ranked fandoms and this and that, I never had the Loud House on there. Because I heard some things, but I, I don't know. Furries, worse than bronies, and definitely Loud House worse fell than off Roblox after a while. transfer games. <laughs> wait, what, what, wait, let me rewind it. Furries, worse than bronies, and definitely worse than Roblox transfer games. <laughs> nah, nah, there's no way. Not gonna lie, I almost myself with that. It's bad, bad, it's really bad. How bad can it be, though? Not worse than pony. No, bronies is grown men into ponies. Into ponies. Come on. <laughs> You're not ready for the I'm scared. Is he about to snipe a child? Yeah, all of what you just saw is based off of real Loud House fan art. And you what? Okay, this is a bad start. This is a bad start. <laughs> Bro, what is happening? I don't know. This is this is a bad start. I mean, they just killed them. They just killed they just killed the kids. There's fan art like bro, they just kill kids. Fan art kills kids all the time. Right? Yeah, it does get worse than this. Oh. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to your guided tour of the most degenerate fandom on the internet. Okay. The Loud House video. Intro WTF is going. I'm scared. Oh yeah, by the way, just join the Discord if you want to get sneak peeks and other fun things related to future- Like, just the way he gave that cinematic-ass intro, it's- This isn't giving me videos, help. or don't- I've already paused really like 10 you. times. In the beginning, there was Chris Savino, a veteran animator and a guy who couldn't control his urge to share his pleasure of working with some of his employees, until he got caught up sharing his pleasure of working with some of his employees. But really quickly, let's back Wait, up. Wait, what did that sign the mirror wanted? Until he got caught up sharing his pleasure of working. I swear to God, if you don't go out with me, I will blacklist you. No, the animated, the animation industry, bro. Honestly, like the entire. Industries just be fed. why is every industry fed up like right? even the animation industry too with some of his employees animation industries. Really quickly. Let's back up a little bit the loud house stars Lincoln an 11 year old little menace who lives with his 10 older and younger sisters Man, I wonder how the internet took this one Get out of my house! The show dropped in 2016 to pretty high praises being the first time its host channel Nickelodeon actually gave a shit about another cartoon since SpongeBob mm. but has since Fallen off to say the least. Today, wait, tune since SpongeBob, but has since fallen. Dude, we just started. We just started. I'm telling you, bro, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing we can do. 
literal children and it turned to this? On off to say the least. Today, you're gonna be taken on a journey through the disgusting underbelly of the Loud House. This it's fandom, four, four, five, to shit? see what hell truly lies beneath. We're gonna be discussing why the show has become host to such an awful fandom, as well as some of the art and literature created surrounding the show. Then, Sex I'll be diving into the darker insane. corners of the fandom, and the evils that have spawned through the contents of the original show. So, if you're prepared enough to handle it, let's begin, entering the first circle of fandom hell, Limbo. Limbo, we're going to discuss the relatively benign things this fandom partakes in, as well as why it has gotten so big in the first place. The fandom has essentially spread its wings over multiple platforms since its inception, and isn't always awful. Anyways, the nicer parts of the fandom are usually found in more public spaces like Twitter. DeviantArt, kinda. What? Twitter? The nice part of the fandom is on Twitter? Oh, that's how you know they're f Like, that's how you know it's over. Where, where, so where's the sick parts of the fandom? They have to go, because every every terrible fandom hides in a Twitter group or Twitter community or this and that. That's, 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 that's their nest. That's their echo chamber. Or Discord. The next one would be Discord after that. So where are they? Probably Discord, actually. Probably Discord. Where there are actual moderation teams and people who don't like seeing... Usually, most fan art at worst involves creepy self-inserts, but usually as redrawn scenes from the show or putting the characters in new places. Mm. That should be about it for Limbo, so let's descend into the next circle. For some reason, there's a large portion of this fan art community that is a strong affinity. Oh my god, bro! I can I can already see one of the drawings like in plain sight, even though it's blurred. I can I can really really see it, and I don't like it. I'm just gonna play. Affinity for drawing the main character, I can Lincoln, see it through the blur. and his sisters in, let's just call them sensual situations. Of course, it gets worse than this, but you'd be surprised at the amount of safe work art that really skirts the line between sibling love and incest love. <laughs> What was that image? Really skirts the line between sibling love and... This bitch is a lesbian? Wow, Linky, you're becoming really good at... <laughs> Bro, I'm at extreme. I'm at extreme. I'm at extreme. I can't look at this. I can't do this anymore. <sighs> Incest love. <laughs> On top of this, there's a whole other side of this art community I'll be showing later. To give you a taste, remember the intro I spent four days animating and rendering? Yeah, that barely scratches the surface. Hmm. The Loud House core art community is booming. Lori Loud and a horrific Oh, what happened to her? Here, Lincoln Loud undergoing chemotherapy there. Everyone in the Loud family crying because one of the sisters was left with horrific injuries. Oh my god! Here, et cetera, et cetera. I won't lie, it's kind of funny literally just because of how absurd it is, but then again, there's an entire community of people out there who draw images- Wait, but what is that? Is that supposed to be a fetish like- A fetish for cancer? Why are they drawing them with cancer? That's just sad. Like, that's actually just sad. Of nine-year-old cartoon kids getting into bloody and traumatic accidents. Like, imagine if a show like Someone we had a off community to this? like this. I wouldn't be surprised. Yo, bad pause. Bad pause. What is this? Bro, Gen Alpha's cooked. Like, they're actually... Gen Alpha's done for. The the next generation we're about to have like ten school shooters every block. It's already bad now. This is what they're watching. This is what they watch, bro. I don't want to get too carried away. As there's enough of this shit to make an entire ass section going over some of it. Anyways, the next section is one of the most mind-blowingly hilarious things I've ever shown on this channel, and I think you'll agree. Hmm. Okay. I'd rather fucking kill myself. <laughs> When we think of the long-winded epics of Gluttony. fiction, one's mind usually points towards the Epic of Gilgamesh, Homer's Odyssey, War and Peace, or Chris Chan's biography. However, ah. what if I told you the longest work of fiction ever written is a Loud House self-insert fanfiction that has, count them with me, one, two, three, sixteen million seven hundred seventy-seven thousand two hundred fifteen words at the time of writing. second <clears throat> we're gonna do a little a little tutorial a little side tutorial guys a side tutorial here's the top nine top nine best job search websites of 2023 so the first one we have is indeed a very popular website many of you may know it if you have a, if you've better, ever been employed somewhere okay next one's going to be monster you know it's a little bit more expensive and pricey but you have a better chance of actually getting employment somewhere 
Okay, next one's going to be Glassdoor. It's another free app. Uh, all your information is going to be there. It, it makes putting the resume together as easy as possible. Okay, the next one's going to be Flex Jobs. You know, it's flexible jobs you can do here and there. Why? Why? Imagine them putting that amount of effort into a job or school. Like, they have to just be sitting down every day. They're, they're not in school. They're, they're, they don't have a job, clearly. They don't talk to family or friends. They just sit down and write this story. And how much people could they add into 16 million words? Like, let me search up how long... I'm gonna see if I can search it up. How long is all of One Piece? 8,472 minutes of reading, little less than 142 hours. Yeah, you could definitely... It's definitely like a thousand hours. The other one's like a thousand hours. 115 words at the time of writing. Yo, imagine, yo, imagine the, the author just, he just, he or she, just, they just write you into it. And what, what are you going to do? They just write you into, they, they write you into the fanfic. What are you going to do about it? You're going to, you're going to stop it? You're going to take the fanfic down? I guarantee he, he or she probably can't be stopped. They probably can't be stopped. And I'm believe it or not, it's still being updated regularly. More words the most than the recent Bible? edition being from 21 hours ago as of writing this. Oh my. No, this section is not meant We're to bully the creator of his work. I just want to show a particularly amusing nah, part. bring bullying back. They deserve to be bullied. They either weren't bullied enough or maybe bullied too much. One of the two. Fan that I think really two. furthers the idea of how insane the whole thing is. Mr. James Dean 5842 is the creator of this masterwork and at the young and naive age of 36 has managed to create quite the work of fiction here. He also makes sure to specify- Okay, that's a red flag off rip. Cause like me being 20, bruh, me being 20, I don't, I, like I was watching Cartoon Network before this. Like I wasn't watching this. I never seen this. Why is he as a 36 year old man watching this shit? I guess you can watch any cartoon you want at any age. I understand, but I don't know, it's just weird. He never accepts My quote, dad's bad opinions, age. bad criticism, racial slurs, and hateful oh, wow. comments, which is fair, I guess. I'm sure he's gotten no shortage of those since he began writing this 2,000 chapter epic. Anyways, let's go over part of the story. Chapters. The story begins with our, at the time, 30-year-old protagonist moving in with his family into their multi-million dollar mansion in Royal Woods, Michigan. Fortunately for JD here, he bumps into the guy that starts the whole story, Lincoln. He introduces this mysterious man to his entire ass family, and of course, he then naturally hits it off with literally every one of Lincoln's sisters. Because wait, hits it off or hits on them? Why not? All the characters do their own thing until talking to JD, where they just respond like robots every single time. Why? Thank you. I feel like I'm watching an AI interact with itself. But you know. yep. We now discover that the author has all of a sudden man, decided by the way. to spawn an 11th sister named Lainey who likes to paint and shit. He didn't even follow the four-letter name thing that every other character in the family follows. He continues beating the sisters one oh. by one until he meets the 16-year-old sister, Lenny. He remarks, You sure are pretty, Lenny. Alright. And each of the next chapters... Oh my god. Oh my god. This is actually terrible. This is so bad. This is so bad. After he proceeds to awkwardly insert himself into actual episodes from the show. In the second chapter, he makes sure to let us know that although he is 30 in real life, he is 15 in the fan fiction. <laughs> A 30-year-old man role-playing as a 15-year-old alongside a bunch of underage girls. What could possibly go wrong? Okay, I'm Oh, my God. And he probably thinks there's nothing wrong with it, too. He probably thinks, like, oh, well, I mean, I'm 15 in it, so I can basically say I'm doing this with this person, this with that person. <sighs> Bro, was a cupcake man. Reading this a bit further, Super and at some point, he inserted Ed, Ed, and Eddie, and now they all hang out at Lincoln's house? He also had Mega Mind? Wait, did I just see Mega Mind? He inserted Ed, Ed, and Eddie. And now they all Ed, hang Ed, out Mega Mind? Oh, this is gonna be awesome. Mindstorm Death Ray. <laughs> Where the f did Mega Mind come from? What? And why are they, why is he with Ed and Eddie? Gin's house. He also has a segment where they view into an alternate gender abandoned version of the Loud House where, and I quote, we saw Lynn Sr. and Rita's counterparts crying as the older boys were taken away in police cars and the younger boys were taken away by child protection services. What? Anyways, skipping ahead 1900 chapters, um, there isn't a single recognizable okay. character left other than the author and an occasional loud sister. They visit all kinds of other cartoons from Dexter's Lab into the Spider-Verse and f***ing Total Drama Island, the Redonkulous Race. And, like I said, it's still- This man created, like, the multiverses of multiverses. The, the multiverses of multiverses. These aren't even in the same universes. They're just going to each other in different- not the same art style, not the same characters. What? And he's on to this very day. It needs a most movie? of the recent chapters alone having multiple thousands of words. For context, in 2018, the story had 180 chapters, and in 2021, it had 1,300 chapters. 
In two years, this guy's written oh. another seven and a half million words and 850 chapters. And what exactly are- It has 13,000 reviews. You Hold on. Seven and a half million words. Well, it's probably popular just because of how long it is. That's why. And I need to see the reviews. I need to see the reviews badly. <laughs> I need to see the people who actively read this. 50 chapters. This is getting and sad. And what exactly are you doing with your How much your time life? does bro have? Shit, man. We need my boy James Dean 5842 to finish up Hunter Hunter. <laughs> Longer than One Piece? Here's a. Uh, when you Hersey? think of notoriously Hersey? bad fan art, what do you think of? My Little Pony? I mean, yeah, ah! that's entirely wrong. Ah! Is it a core staple of that fan to show bizarre sexual tension between siblings? Yeah, I don't think ah, so. We didn't need what to see Bowie? that. Is it common for that fandom to produce gruesome images, imagining small children being deathly ill or fatally injured? Yeah, not really. With the Loud House fandom, you get this much and sometimes more, but we'll get into that part later. For now, we'll discuss the art that is often created by viewers who just wish to show their adoration for the children living in the Loud family. As we know, mm. fan art is a controversial concept within many communities, often because those who draw them are not very in touch with basic morality, ah. to say the least. There's a reason the next three parts are dedicated to Loud House fan art. I want to prove to you, the viewer- Wait, let me see these categories. There's a reason the next three parts are dedicated to Loud House- Basically illegal. So this has to be like Rule 34, right? This is gonna be like Rule 34. This is why I keep a tight grip on NFG, bro. If I ever see, that's why if I ever see I do some shit, oh, you're being mean, you're doing me. I'm, I don't give a f bro. I'm deleting that shit. You can never post it again. Fan art. And the fan art section I want to prove to you, the viewer, that this fan may be the worst major legal. community on the internet. Coming from an admittedly poorly made article by AminoApps.com, we can take a look at some of the most vile yet apparently safe for work things the fandom has created. Here, we see a precursor to the images we're going to be purely discussing in the last part. The person who drew this believed so much in the ah, bond between two eleven. I was on the screen for so long. In bed, Alwas Lincoln's seventeen-year-old sister is menacingly standing over them. Next, another preview at the awful situations these artists put these children in for their own amusement. With this image showing Lincoln's fifteen-year-old sister pissed drunk off of beer and vomiting in a dirty alleyway. Like, how the f do people come up with this? Why? Like, I won't lie. In a morbid way, it's kind of funny. But, but why? She's just an alcoholic randomly. That's actually that's sad. That's just because of how purely of Luna is 15. Sure it is. Some more lovely art comes from Pinterest. Again, putting this poor, tortured 11 year old boy in a provocative situation. Seriously, just Ugh. let my boy play Roblox and watch Skibbity Toilet videos. My God. This one shows him being affectionately hugged by Lori's 17 year old friend, and I don't think she loves him like a brother. Oh There's actually a shocking God. amount of art between these two specifically for some uh. reason. Here's one of them holding hands and blushing while no! couch with Lori's friend literally dwarfing him in size. No! Some kind of, like mommy issue projection. Here's another one of that girl Ronnie Ann. Right, that's why, oh, like, this is exactly, oh my God, this is exactly why a lot of times you just have to shit on anybody that ships. Anybody that ships. It's always, whenever you hear about shipping, it's always never the normal things. Never the normal things. Like, when is the time you've heard of a ship that has been normal in a fandom? Never, because it just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. Booty shorts. Here's one of Lori's friend forcefully kissing Lincoln. Here's one where Lincoln is romantically laying with his sister's lesbian girlfriend. Here's one where Lori is kissing Lincoln. And I'm getting ahead of myself. See what kind of rabbit hole we're in for? And Bruh. this is just the beginning. There are Basically literally doesn't thousands exist. of artworks depicting this kind of psycho shit. But if you can believe it, we've only just skimmed the surface. So it's about to be worse. Violence. Okay. Violence is probably the most literal of all the circles we've yet discussed. If you weren't aware, people in the Loud House fandom seem to have an affinity for placing its characters into sad and depressing situations, often depicting them as deathly ill, morally wounded, dead, etc. Again, tell me another community that has such a unique issue. Y'all think that's a weird fetish with fandoms? Like, they like to see some of the characters dead with, like, their guts out or something? I don't understand why- Like, why? Why? To give some more perspective, imagine if there was a large community of people who drew fan art of the backyard against featuring Pablo being dropped into a pit of wooden spears. That's what I mean uh. by how insane all this is. Taking a look at this Reddit post where someone has the same question I bet all of you, including myself, are having, we get an answer from this user. Quote, Biggest reason behind sad Loud House stuff is a pair of ultra poorly received episodes, Brawl in the Family and No Such Luck, which generally trigger the fan base to hold a grudge against the Loud Family and seek to comfort themselves by imagining incredibly angsty situations where Lincoln disowns his own family, runs away, abuses them back, what have you. Generally, no, nah, I don't think that's it. That that couldn't have because of two episodes. They're saying because of two episodes, that's why people are into that. I feel like people are always like they're into just that weird stuff. Like their mind is just they have mental illness. They just have mental illness. 
Definitely got to be not a cap. pick for the characters either, because there's I get the impression most people making this art actually want to evoke sympathy and pity for all involved. The writer continues by saying how this is apparently not an issue unique to the Loud House and shouldn't be seen as such. Although there's some credence to be lending to what the writer is saying here, I simply can't buy mm. the fact that this is Loud House fans' secondhand trauma dumping by drawing some child and sibling abuse in Paint.net. On top of that, other kids' shows that feature gore or trauma art, let's say Spongebob for example, feature abstract Spongebob? representations of grown-ass adults. Okay, this is kind of funny though. <laughs> oh my god, this is just... <laughs> It's kind of funny with seeing Spongebob, like, sad. Uh. Not realistic representations of actual people. It's the fact that so much of I this art has been created, often not even featuring Lincoln, that leads me to believe this is just fanboy reasoning. It doesn't have a whole lot of basis behind it. To help illustrate my point, let me introduce you to a 27-chapter, 346,000-word fanfiction about Lincoln being diagnosed with a terminal illness. Requiem for Allowed is a fanfiction written by some dude from Argentina who decided to write a PhD dissertation on diagnosing cartoon children with neurofibromatosis, aka a deadly brain tumor. I'll quickly skip- What if this man's just like the best doctor ever? Like he breaks down the full-on cancer, the treatment, all of the cells, whatever. And he could he could be using his work for actually actual good in this world, and he's just using it for a loud house fandom. Do this to spare you the ironically decent writing to give you the gist of what happened in this fan fiction. Chapter one: Lincoln is out playing soccer with his sister. He collapses and has to go to the hospital. Chapter two: He wakes up in the hospital, is visited by his family, but his parents kick his sisters out because they're being rowdy. Chapter three: Lincoln's parents spend the night in the hospital with him, where they tell his sisters he has brain tumors because of an inherited genetic disease, and he's told he has three weeks to live. Chapter 4, nothing happens, blah blah blah, something. Chapter 27, consummatum est, which means it is finished in Latin. Wow. Lincoln talks to his family and says he loves them and then falls asleep and dies. Apparently the Loud House fandom ate this shit up because even before researching this video, I've actually heard whispers of it in various places. Anyways, let's move on to the visual art side of the fandom. Why would you... Is it really the all of the fandom like this? Maybe this is why, this is why I just haven't heard of it. This in vivid deviant art quality. In this image, we see the Loud family undergoing lots of suffering. It starts relatively minor with Lisa having a failed explosion or experiment, the twins getting into a fight, Lucy being sad, Lincoln breaking a stuffed animal, and then Lynn has a bent leg, Luann is having a reputation ruined, hey, we've seen this one before, Luna has alcohol poisoning from binge drinking, Lenny has been stabbed by glass or something, and Lori's on the verge of death. Like, this guy made a medieval triptych version of Loud House fan art. We get to see all of them needlessly suffering for some reason. Wow, look at that! A fully realized reenactment of the pain and suffering experienced by the Loud family oh during Lincoln's God. final moments from Requiem for a Loud. If we keep looking, we see Lincoln with fatal head trauma, Lincoln getting into a fatal car crash with Lori. <laughs> and somebody- wait, I'm really thinking of it. Somebody wrote out the story. The dude- there's, there's a guy that writes the story, so somebody else drew the fan art. Unless if he knows how to draw, I guess. That makes us worse, so yeah, there's people that actually look up to this. Lola f visiting the grave of her twin sister, and it just continues on forever. There's no end to the suffering this family experiences in various iterations upon the core show. Whatever conclusions you may have reached about the show's fandom, though, we haven't even reached the bottom of the barrel yet. Stay tuned, where we'll be diving into how disgusting this fandom can truly get on the unsupervised corners of the internet. Mm hmm. Injury looks like a PV PG movie injury. Fraud. As of now, you, the viewer, are standing on the precipice of a terrifyingly deep pit of immorality and flat-out illegality. Before we take the jump, allow me to guide you along the edge of the canyon, giving you a hint of what's to come. Hmm. If I haven't hinted at it enough, the art that many people in this fandom creates involves putting underage characters, sometimes even family members, in essentially tense environments. Let's go over how- Wait, what? How deep this rabbit hole travels into the very- Is that him as an adult? Family members in essentially tense- That's him as an adult? Environments. Let's go over how deep this it rabbit gets hole worse. travels into the various dark and gross corners the servers of this fandom has to offer. For an example of something actually official in the show, that even a distant observer would notice, is the strange relationship between Lincoln's 11-year-old friend, Clyde, and his own 17-year-old sister. And they actually kind of play it off as normal. Look, I don't know about you, but to write such a weird- see this. ...year-old sister. And they actually kind of play it off as normal. This page is a comprehensive list of moments highlighting Clyde McBride's crush on Lori Loud, sorted by episodes from season one. Season. Wait, what show did this? Was it fairly odd? No, it wasn't fairly odd parents. It wasn't fairly odd parents. I'm trying to think. I don't know. I don't know, actually. Look, I don't know about you, but Gravity to write such a weird never. thing to do a kid's show, especially with the creator himself being a woman toucher, it doesn't make a whole lot of Ex Nickelodeon producer Chris Sevenot, whatever, apologizes amid sexual harassment allegations. Bro. Has there ever been a regular writer that's written 
cartoon shows? Why is it like every news news story? I, I'm just learning that beloved cartoon writers are just end up being sexual harassers, touchers, this and that, EDPs. I mean, no wonder it attracts that kind of fan base. Yeah, it kind of makes sense now. It kind of makes sense. Could have toned down the whole bloody nose thing or at the bare minimum made this kid attracted to someone his own age. Like, shit, we don't need representation for most underage Twitter furries. Anyways, moving away from the official shit, all you have to do to enter the cesspool of art and fanfiction is by searching up, quote, Loud House Ship. In the world of fan art, there are three categories here. One, in-show canon relationships. Obviously, most of these are, like, actually morally acceptable, like characters okay. dating other characters their own age. Crazy, right. right? Number two, pudding. I shit you not, specifically one sister, Luann, with that random background character from a single episode into a lesbian relationship. Even generically searching up- Wait, uh, what? Cloud House ship yields so many results between these two characters. I was honestly dumbfounded. I figured, you know, eventually it'll stop. Nope, it just- How did I even invent that? They just took a, a random background character? What? This fandom's actually so trash. They didn't even know, they didn't even know how to put things Keeps together. Keeps going. Number three. Shipping Lincoln with his own 13-year-old sister. Yeah, while also showing them as having kids. Again, name another show as mainstream as... Where is nothing you could do? There's nothing we could do. Yo, the rapture's coming. The rapture's coming. Repent. Repent. The rapture's coming, yo. Repent. The rapture's coming. We can't do this. Not the siblings. But they be like, bro, this is basically like, oh my god, they be doing this in anime fan bases too. Like in Demon Slayer with, um... This is for the trauma. <laughs> for, with Tanjiro and Nezuko, oh my god. This with a fan of this insane. I can't Delving do this. Into the fan fiction Breaking side of things, the there's artists. no shortage of content involving more underage characters enjoying each other's company. Again, oh, just look up Mountain House fan fiction. The first result is a story called Shipping War. Our author places huh? a strong emphasis on puberty and its effects, and how he's now 13 years old, also making him irresistible to the other 13 year Okay, but here's my question. Would y'all think it's less weird if it was somebody that was, like, younger doing this, like, doing the fanfic? I would still think it's actually, no, it's actually pretty weird. It's actually pretty, like, the dude that wrote that 16 million words, yeah, no. Doors around him. Yeah, Literally I don't know about you. It feels weird seeing what was probably an adult write about young teenagers experiencing romance, especially a kid's show. Basically, this whole thing turns out to be the equivalent of a harem anime, but written by a lonely adult man. So you can just about assume where that goes. Oh, we're not done yet, though. I've got one more story to torture you with. Oh. There's another fan fiction called Ship Shape. Can you guess what this one's about? A story where Lincoln has some form of sensual or sexually tense interaction with almost every one of his sisters. Here are some excerpts if you're curious. Don't read it. Very don't funny, read Lori. Lincoln called back. Put me down. He was blushing. Uh, Lori loved it when he blushed. Lori could tell his heart wasn't in it, however. His eyes were locked on her breasts. <laughs> as they should be. Dude, she's 17 keep years old. I can't keep watching this. I can't keep watching so, this. So, like, what do I even say about this? Lincoln agreed, unable to take his eyes off his bouncing sister. Parentless specifically the going parts extremely that high. were bouncing. And then we can ask... Again, bro, this girl is 16 talking to her 11-year-old brother. Speaking of, later in the story, we get these bone-chilling words. Little help, Link? Luna asked. Feels like I'm not doing it right. Just put your arms around my waist. All right, what's next? What? I, I don't even want to do this one. Here, uh, AI Mark Zuckerberg, read this one for me. No, don't read it, don't read it, don't read it. I'm about to have Mark Zuckerberg read this shit to me. At 14 you years old, anime harem? Lola Loud looked like she had been purposefully constructed to be the first thing to show up when Jailbait was entered into a search engine. Oh yeah, by the way, if y'all don't know, Jailbait was a Reddit server that would basically have miners, right? that were jailbait like in inappropriate poses and things of that nature yeah a fact that had aided the fbi countless times without her the knowledge. reddit got deleted yeah the reddit got deleted to say the least. contrasted sharply with the shapely hips and full breasts that were commonly enjoyed by the women of the loud family i think i've given enough examples and i'm sure thank you thank you thank you that was terrible that was actually terrible. done listening to this but if you've forgotten then let me remind you this is the surface of what's to come so, if you want to get even darker, stay tuned, and we'll be staring the devil right in the face. Treachery? You can Why so detailed? Yeah, that's what makes it so much worse. Like, they went into full-on... Like, using sens sensual words, like he said weirdest words i've never you heard. probably already guessed what i've been alluding towards this whole video if you haven't realized it yet the loud house fandom has created a large volume of inappropriate images involving children often combining themes of abuse among other things this is basically just uh, uh rule 34 stuff this side of the fandom doesn't hold back either including all of the sisters and other kids in the town from ages 17 years old to 15 months 
I don't think you need to even see blurred examples as proof, nor do I really want to see those images either, but to give you some context. Bro, oh my god. Oh my god. No, 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 this isn't even normal rule 34. Like this, bro. It's not, none of this shit is normal. None of this is normal. None of, none, none of this is normal. Only way to solve this is death sentences. Ancient punishments. We need to see this. Like that one video we watched with the worst punishments where they would like have the rats eat people's stomach out as a punishment. Every single artist. Every single artist. Every single one. Every single one. Just get that punishment. Context on how bad this is. Let's play a game of numbers. Bring back on a website dedicated to a certain internet rule, searching the Loud House yields a grand total of 7,500 results. A children's show comprised primarily of children with 7,500 NSFW images of it produced. On another website I discovered while doing my searches that I will not name due to the entire point of the website being underage art, there are 16,000 results. I cannot stress to you how big of a thing this is in the fandom and while it may not be the majority of people within it, the sheer volume of these works is not few enough to just ignore. If the few and the proud within the Loud House fandom end up seeing this video, I can almost guarantee the argument about it being a small part of the fandom that we do not agree with will come up. And while you may not be wrong in the objective sense, the fact this type of art is so voluminous compared to other- Now imagine this being like your number one fandom. 60k is crazy. Imagine this being your number one fandom. There's no way to- It's like saying you're in the My Hero Academia fandom. Like saying you're in the fandom, not saying you're a fan of it. Like you can say you're- You can say you're a fan of the Loud House, the Loud House, like the show. Not the fandom, but if you say you're like, a, like you like the fandom, there's no way to explain like in a regular type of way, you know, what the fandom is, like what you like about it. There's no way. Fandoms is the true issue here. Just like that Reddit guy mentioned Spongebob, let's see how the volume of Spongebob and SFW car compares to the loudest. On the first website I mentioned, the number sits around 3,000. That means that a show in total that has existed for three times longer and has a consumer base of billions has less than half the artwork of a show that's been around for seven oh years God. and is primarily made for an American audience. To reiterate, it's more of a macro scale trend thing than on an individual scale. Remember, this video is about the fandom as a whole, so I've covered it as a whole. This video isn't meant to discuss the inner workings of Loud House internet politics and to discuss the nuance of a misunderstood fandom or something. And although I understand- Nah, you don't even gotta explain it, bro. There's no way- And very well, this it. type of stuff the general fandom- If you're really getting offended over it, like, then I feel like that makes you seem even more like you're a part of that part of the fandom doesn't tolerate These i'm making a video to bring awareness to this shows? kind of stuff since based on my research only a select few cartoon youtubers have discussed this fandom at any sort of depth usually staying on the surface of the fandom and i know mm. this is a wild time to plug but if you want to see content where i venture to and discuss places where most youtubers wouldn't even think about venturing to drop a sub and share the video around so more people can learn about i like the video yeah that was actually like oh my god that was that was terrible yeah y'all are right actually that might be the might have to say that's like top three worst worst fandoms to ever exist it's going in my top three that's new top three i learned i learned a lot about that that fandom that i really shouldn't have learned genshin is still worse it's just there's so many terrible fandoms now it's like i, I never even heard of the loud house phantom never heard of this this made me not even want to see the show an episode of the show ever that's how bad it was y'all just stay safe